The difference in a globalized market is this. You don't start with the local business and say, how do I gain advantage and leverage it through some common effect? You start with the common effects. You say, look, in a world that is becoming more and more homogeneous, where the differences are differences of market segment, not differences of nation, how should I organize and optimize my product innovation capability? Where should I place it and how should it organize and operate as a seamless, integrated and coordinated entity for the benefit of all my markets around the world? Secondly, how do I organize my demand generation skills and capabilities? I need to know things about channel management, about brand, about pricing, about various aspects of how to run a business in a particular location. But there's no need to replicate that knowledge. How do I build a demand generation capability for the benefit of all the markets in which I compete. Thirdly, how do I build a fully integrated supply chain capability? And having built those three core foundations, how do I then bring them into each local market, providing only enough localization to meet the idiosyncratic peculiarities of that marketplace to succeed and win in that market? That's what I mean by market globalization. That we start with the center. We start with what the depth of common know-how needs to be. And only then think about how we localize it to meet and deal with the nuances, the small differences that exist in one market versus another. That's the phase that most industries have not yet entered. But is ahead of us in less than the next 10 years. That's the phase that's going to unleash a fury of competition. Now, what changes when you get there? My goodness, everything. Customer demand, we're dealing with much more homogeneous demand within different customer segments. Value delivery, the floor on product quality rises rapidly because what is low price, low quality no longer plays in the marketplace. It has to be low price with quality. Our ability to extract premiums for more features declines. We're put under pressure. The total number of competitors within an industry rises initially because people flood in from different formerly distinct markets, but eventually rapidly declines because most markets can't, can't support more than three to five competitors. The competitive set changes also, right? Because, because we see the, the price people rapidly improve quality and then become innovators. We see the product leaders spend a lot of time trying to protect the price premiums that they've gained, and that oftentimes doesn't pay off. And the whole focus from a market leadership position becomes what's the best apparatus for product innovation on a global basis? What's the best apparatus and know-how for demand generation on a global basis? And what's the best apparatus for supply chain on a global basis? That becomes the core of how these large companies decide who's going to win and lose in the competition for market leadership.